we want to invite you to the Intentional Motherhood Retreat 2024. Last year, over 600 mothers gathered together to learn, to worship, both to encourage and to be encouraged. The Father spoke and the Spirit moved and Jesus healed. And it was so incredible that we cannot wait to do it again. We want to invite you October 3rd through 5th here in Bend, Oregon, where we live. We know that the journey of motherhood is both beautiful and it is hard. It is both life-giving and exhausting at times. And we just want to create space for the Spirit to refresh you in your journey. We're going to lean in to how motherhood so gently and beautifully leads us in the way of spiritual formation. We're going to talk about how we need each other on the journey. We're going to talk about how our connection with God ultimately impacts the connection that we have with our kids. This retreat is both for mothers who desire to be mothers someday, all the way to grandmothers and anywhere in between, because the truth is we all need each other. We need to learn from each other and we need to be together. It was Dallas Willard who said, if you don't come apart for a while, you will come apart in a while. And that is especially true for us mothers. So we just invite you to come away with us. Let's see what the Spirit wants to do, and we can't wait to see you. You're listening to the Intentional Parents Podcast, brought to you by Intentional. Intentional is all about spiritual formation in the family. We desire to bring biblical hope and practical help. Enjoy this week's conversation. Welcome back to the Intentional Parents Podcast. We are here today. And when I say we, I say Phil and Elizabeth. We're down one very down strong one. member. Mm-hmm. Tell us what's happening, Phil. We already <laughs> kind of down one because she is down. <laughs> she is physically laying <laughs> down. Yeah, Diane had uh, tore her meniscus yes. just out of the blue. Mm. Super painful. But anyway, she had a, a outpatient surgery so yes. yesterday. We recorded some podcasts, but yeah. she should have been laying flat. So yes. her leg swelled up a little bit. So she's doing what she's supposed to do: elevation and ice. Elevation so and lost ice. Lost her today, so so it's going to be the three of us. Um, I was looking at. We have this little screen. If you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, if you're watching on, we're on YouTube now. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel or even just given us a thumbs up if you like the content, could you do that? It's super helpful for us. But also, uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, not Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, whichever one, would you mind just rating and subscribing there and even leaving a comment so we can interact? We'd love to do that. But that's a side tangent to say I, we have this little screen that nobody can see off off camera, and I can see this little screen down here on the floor, and I didn't realize like it looked like it, it looked like I woke up this morning and decided I want to dress like a gnome today. So <laughs> I was like, I guess. I'm like, where are you like, going with this? Yeah, you haven't. That makes sit- sense. No, I wasn't trying to. I didn't realize that until I was looking at the camera, but I don't have. I'm not like at our house, so I don't have clothes. Like this is what I got. So why didn't you tell me? I did. Did I you didn't not think even you care? You look like a gnome. Oh, good. Oh, but you good. wear beanies all the time, so yeah, I, I have no is, hair. This is the this weird is my thing. Life. Why do you about... think you look like a gnome? I, I mean, it's just like I don't know. It feels, it feels gnomish with my, my these shoes, oh. and then I don't know. Okay. I just feel like a gnome. This is the weird <laughs> thing about video podcasting. We actually have to like you have to think about what you're wearing. Think about yeah. it, which was definitely not happening. Yeah, before. I feel like I feel like the audio podcast. If you're just an audio podcast, that's the equivalent to working at home and only having to dress the top half of yourself totally. for the Zoom calls. You just wear whatever comfy pants you want, <laughs> but you just have to wear something nice up top. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we we are definitely down a member. And a couple things to just let people know about. Uh, they're in the show notes, so you can check out more. But we've announced the motherhood retreat. That's happening. Any ladies, uh, please come to that. It's going to be a great time. Can't wait to meet you there. Uh, anything you want to just a little shout out to the ladies to have them come. You want to invite them personally? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I said this last time and I feel like I, it's still so true. I don't normally like women's events and things like that. And I had the time of my life. It was so last year was so fun. And so I just can't wait to see what God wants to do. And I know that sounds like every Christian says that, like, let's see what God wants to do. But it really was like, 
every time I walked into the room, it was like you got hit with the Holy Spirit. Like the yeah, was Spirit really cool, was moving yeah. and doing something. And so I just can't wait to create the space again and then yeah. see what God wants to yeah. do with it and who he wants to bring. And um, yeah, we're already, we're preparing for it now. And I just excited am about so it. excited yes. about it. Yeah. Very excited. So yes, um, come to that. That's going to be a great thing. If you're hearing this before summer, we're going to be at Forest Home. Our whole crew, Phil and Diane, Elizabeth and I, we're all going to be teaching there the whole week. Uh, it's a family camp. It's a great camp. So much cool history. Um, we've been a couple times, you and Diana have been, but Elizabeth, this is her first yeah. time actually coming. That's right. Um, and Bringing I'm so all excited. all of our kids. Yeah. Yes. You, <laughs> yeah, that will be, that'll be fun. They're trying to teach. I think they'll have a great time. But trying to teach and parent all at the same time in those worlds. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, they but, will have fun. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, yeah, we'll love we getting will. to connect with people. Yes. But um, so yeah, that's, that's another opportunity that we might see all, anybody that's available or able to come to that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have a couple different events you can check out in the show notes, but just make sure you can stay up to date with that stuff. We are going to do a Q and R today. And these are questions that many of you have asked and still to date, uh, Q and R's are something that I know we get feedback, you know, in different arenas and different places and mediums. But the one consistent theme is we love when you guys you know, talk about all the different topics that can come up in real life. So this is going to be both, you know, obviously uh, random to an extent, but it's also going to hopefully be encouraging. Um, and so we've decided instead of like getting eight questions that we will not get to, we've decided <laughs> to just get four, take four, and see then we'll if see we if we can to get to all four. Yeah. But but to try, because what happens is we our first one's always the longest. Anyone listening is like, I know, you're nodding your head like, I know. Mm. So we'll do our best to be concise. But at the same time, these questions are really important. They're from real lives, from real people who are asking them. So we want to honor them as well. So uh, if Phil, you're ready. If Elizabeth, you're ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, so okay, there's a handful we could ask, but I'll, I'll ask this one. Uh, when you're in a place, it, oh, sorry, let me start over. When you're in that place of knowing truth, but your emotions and your body are not in alignment with that truth, can you elaborate on ways to get unstuck slash move the needle? Mm. So that idea that you have emotions and recently we just did a whole episode on emotions. So you can go back and listen to that, um, on all the various emotions, what they mean, what God's word says about them, how to actually handle some of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that idea that your emotions and your body aren't in alignment. And a, a lot of this, uh, might even be some of the idea that you have, um, I, I could just say from my own life, you have maybe trauma or you have different experiences where your central nervous system isn't necessarily lined up with where you're mentally, emotionally, spiritually going, and there's a disconnect. That's kind of what, mm -hmm. as I'm understanding this. So um, what are some of the things, elaborate on ways to help get unstuck? Yeah. Um, can I give just a practical one to get us started to give you guys some time to warm up? Mm -hmm. I know you have great answers, but I, I mean, one just very practical one for me um, that I didn't think would help is just going on a walk. Uh, the, what happens to me personally when I go on walks, it's really re-regulating to me. It actually brings my central nervous system back to like center. And it's really funny. I remember when Birdie was a little, she was very little and she had been diagnosed with all sorts of, uh, you know, she had brain damage from all this different, these different seizures that she had and she was struggling. And I just remember she was at that stage. How old was she, honey? Maybe, maybe two. Like, like two. And she would just have these moments where no matter what you did, and you probably remember this, Phil, no matter what you did, she just, you couldn't calm her down. She was just so heightened, you know? And I remember, uh, was it our doctor? Was it her pediatrician that said, I know this might sound weird, but whenever that happens or her neur neurologist, mm -hmm. someone scoop her up and just walk outside. Don't mm -hmm. say anything. Just step outside. Let her touch mm -hmm. a plant. Maybe let her feet touch the ground. Uh, if it's raining, which we lived in Portland at the time, so that was easy. It was always raining. Let the rain, you know, touch her face. And I mean, almost nine times out of 10, no matter how dysregulated she was, we would walk outside holding her and she would just begin to calm. And it was all mm -hmm. like in about 30 seconds. You remember this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so even just physically, like the fresh air, like was so re-regulating to her. Similar, I know for me, if I'm really upset or really frustrated and I have those moments where like my emotions are not connected to my 
uh, my desires. Like I want to be a better dad than mm-hmm. my emotions are letting me at that moment. Um, practically walking right, you know, step by step, activating right brain, left brain is a huge way to help. But I'd love for you to elaborate because I'm sure you see that differently, interestingly. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And then I'd love to hear what scriptures you're cooking because I can already see them mm-hmm. over there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Stirring up some... Well, it, it's hard to know the context of the person that asked this question. Yeah. Because I feel like, in my mind, it almost has to be divided into two different categories or types of experiences or stories. So there's kind of what you're talking about. When there's been trauma, it happens a lot where we might know in our minds I'm safe in this moment, but your body is is reliving an experience that happened before and mm-hmm. your body doesn't know you're safe. You know, it's the idea that trauma is time travel. It's just taking you back to the place that the or event triggering happened. Triggering is time travel. Being yes, triggered yes. is like time travel. A trigger travel is back like to time your, travel to back to, to when the trauma, traumatic yeah. thing happened. Yeah. So there's like the deep rooted trauma like that that often we need help from a Jesus loving trained therapist to be able to do things like EMDR to be able to help us our brain rewire to be able to tell our bodies that we're safe for some of those deep rooted things that can be incredibly helpful. It's not Mm -hmm. the only way, but it can be incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. But I think for a lot of us, maybe you didn't have a horribly traumatic childhood. We've all experienced some form of small T trauma Mm -hmm. just by living life this side of heaven. But I think so often there's those moments when we know how we want to act. We know what the truth is, even about what we feel. We know it in our heads, but it's not actually being (laughs) communicated to our body. Mm -hmm. And I think so often we want to go straight into the mind of like, no, I'm okay. Here's the reasons why. Here's all the, but that doesn't like, just like this person is asking, it doesn't actually get me unstuck. Mm -hmm. I think we have to flip flop it. And we first have to, to even talk to ourselves and God. I feel like for me, it's almost this joint conversation with talking to myself and talking to God about it saying, I know that I'm overreacting to this situation. I know that I'm really triggered by this kid. And I know Mm -hmm. that's not how I want to respond. But you have to acknowledge the emotion that's coming up. So for me, maybe I'm really angry and I have to acknowledge I'm actually really fearful because this kid is talking to me this way and I'm fearful that I've done a bad job <laughs> and they're going to keep that talking they that think way. that it's okay to talk to me yeah. like that and that I'm immediately playing it into when they're 25 and what if they talk to their boss that way and so I have to acknowledge that what's coming up for me is is fear and I have to sit with that for a minute and ask God to speak truth and but we can't we can't heal what we can't feel. I mean, we have to create space like like in that episode we talked about to be able to feel our emotions but not be run by them and act on them mm-hmm. in every mm-hmm. case. But I think first it's sometimes there can it can just take some time for our emotions and our heads to catch up and then therefore our bodies to catch up. Absolutely. I think yep. we have to be willing to sit in that discomfort and like let uh let ourselves feel it so that they can catch up, if that makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. I love that. That was very helpful. Phil, what are your thoughts on this topic? Yeah, well, I mean, we don't know what's behind this question, but um, there's got to be some either fear or anxiety. Yes. You know, because mm-hmm. saying my, my emotions aren't in sync with my mind. But I, I think we have to remember we have the mind of followers of Jesus. We have the mind of Christ. So um, I think we, if, if I was in that state... I think the first thing I would do is get alone. I love your thing about walking because I know when you walk, you're not just walking; I'm you're praying. talking to yes. God and praying. Yes. Prayer so walks. I think that needs to be. That's said. a great clarification. Yeah, yes, they and, are prayer and, walks. and there's something in the walking, though. You know, the left, mm-hmm. right, uh, left, right. Like yes. that's walking, swimming. I like to swim laps. Swimming yeah. is left, right. Diane like it the gets kayak. both sides of your brain both, communicating with each other. Yeah. So yeah. that's great. But I also think meditating on the word. I think we've yes. gotten away from the power of meditating on scripture, yes. which is chewing on it. Mm-hmm. And so, so if I'm if I'm experiencing anxiety, I need to think about what I'm thinking about because. Mm-hmm. May, and when I open the Bible, God is perfectly loving, but He also gives gentle 
direction, rebukes, correction. correction. <laughs> so maybe there's somebody I, I'm real, mm. I didn't even realize that I'm kind of angry again at this person that I've forgiven 18 times, yes. but I need to forgive mm. him again because I'm actually a little bitter mm. or whatever. And I think that's what the Lord does when we... So, you know, when we were recording podcasts yesterday, Philippians 4, 8 came up. You know, yeah. What, what we're, our minds are supposed to dwell on. But what I noticed, you know what, that immediately follows the command about being anxious. This is be anxious for nothing. Mm. Why, does, why is that in there? Because we all get anxious and fearful in my emotions. But in everything by prayer and supplication with, thanks, with thanksgiving, God, I thank you that you see where I'm at right now. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So your heart is how you feel, your mind is how you think. And, mm. and um, it, the command here is, is to come to God with these things and with thanksgiving, and then God's going to bring peace to your heart and your mind. But then the very next verse is, finally, brothers, whatever's true, whatever is honorable, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever is of good repute, good reputation, if there's any excellence of anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. So I just think, um, uh, I know when Diane talks to women and they're feeling a lot, but they know they're supposed to obey a command, what she says, what she was taught by Muriel Cook, who was one of her mentors, obey the command and the emotions will follow. Hmm. And I think that you just can't sidestep from that. You know, hmm. Diane told that story about, you know, the alarm goes off, you don't want to get up. Oh. You, know? <laughs> you just want to. Yes, that was me this morning. I'm yeah. never an alarm person, yeah. but I keep waking. Do you ever yeah. just have you wake up at four yeah. and you fall back asleep and it's yeah. only in enough time for your alarm to go off? That keeps yeah. happening. And I was, I'm there. Yeah. 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 Thank but you. if you follow your feelings, you'll just stay in bed all day. I wanted to. I wanted to skip. The, I mean, I love everybody. I wanted to skip this because I was like, this is beautiful. Yeah. And I'm tired. <laughs> but once you get up and you take a shower or you have your coffee or whatever, Work and you out, open your yeah. Bible, you go, you know what? God is, God is still on the throne. Mm -hmm. And I'm, there's some good stuff happening in I'm my life. I'm slowly dying, so which is true. you have to get up, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess I don't know if that's helpful at all. No, no. That's but what kind of came Yes, your mind, mind. Obedience. Is, is obedience uh, and meditating on scripture and thinking will help you process these emotions. Yeah, as well is what we said in that emotions yeah. episode that yeah. uh, Dallas Willard feelings are, you know, wonderful servants but disastrous masters. Disastrous masters. And that's that that concept is said in a different yeah. way, but that idea that we make the decision with our mind. It sounds like and what I love about this question is it starts with when you are in that place of knowing truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it sounds like this mm -hmm. person knows like I know the yeah. truth, yeah. right? But like these things aren't in alignment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do I get into that alignment? And I would also just say, be curious, ask people and try stuff, you know, try yeah. different things. And maybe you're a person who's like, I hate going on walks. Try it, you know, yeah. or whatever. You know, well, just I think be open. it's so important, especially if you experience trauma as a child and you're, you're feeling like the physical response of like, my head knows this, but my body doesn't, yes. which is what this person's asking. Which I very much understand. Very that. much. Yeah. yeah. I can very much relate. I to think that. it's even more important to find, even if it's one tool. So for you, it's walks. For some people, it might be just like that exercise of, of using all five senses. Like, what do you hear? What do you see? What do you smell? Um, you know, to just ground your body back to the present moment, you know, mm -hmm. I think just, and to your point, just for most people, you just have to try different things to see if they work for our daughter, Birdie, one thing worked for a while and then it was something else that worked. And now we're re trying to figure out what might work for her. So it might change, Yeah. but even just having that level of awareness is so huge yes. of recognizing, Oh, I know what's happening right now. My body and my mind have not caught up with each other. Like that's huge because how often do we not know that that's happening and yeah. we react, we get angry, we're stressed mm. we're, and we just keep going. We don't pause to actually question, wait, what is happening? Why am I so dysregulated mm -hmm. right now? You know? Yeah. And I was thinking of, obviously we're not therapists, licensed therapists. Yeah. We're also not uh, experts in neuroscience or the body or anything like that. But we've had a lot of wonderful people that have helped us and given us tools. So one of the tools they gave us that I'd pass along is even, I know this is silly and we can even explain it real quick, but square breathing, square breaths, mm -hmm. like that is the, 
like and we make our kids care. we make our kids do it oh my why we make them you can't make them do it you just say hey we would you like them. would you like, would you like, to, like do, to do it with me? it's always like especially when they're angry no i don't want to do this dumb breathing yeah. thing oh but, but it helps so much yeah. and it's just yeah explain you breathe quick. in for four seconds you hold it for four seconds you breathe out for four seconds but hold it i want to do this yeah. really quick i just want to give people an example it, it feels is, like a long time it feels like forever but even if you're driving right now or running and well, if you're running, don't do this. You'll pass out. Um, but it's simply that you take a breath in for four seconds. You hold it, as she said, for four seconds, mm-hmm. and you release. So you count to four. I'll do it. Ready? Okay. Start. Ready? In. One, two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Out. Two, three, four. And then you keep doing this. Mm-hmm. And you don't, like, you, you change your pattern of breathing, right? And And what I love about this, although... It's not overtly biblical. Jesus, like breath prayers, are a, a of, of, yeah, uh, is a, of is an ancient form of prayer. Mm-hmm. And that's that idea that as you're breathing, as you're walking, you know, like, Jesus, bless this day. It's like, what what what, what prayers can you say within mm-hmm. one breath, you know? Mm-hmm. And maybe for you, it's breath prayers. Lord Jesus, give me mercy. Lord Jesus, help align my body. Mm-hmm. You know, breath prayers are very And uh, God helpful. created that breath to not only keep us alive, but something about slowing our breathing and breathing deep from our bellies literally calms our entire central nervous system. Sure. And that neuroscience didn't decide that or create that, that cool. or a therapist didn't create it. God created us, our bodies to work in that way. Yeah. So I think that's the beauty of learning about the science about all of that. I love it. Like, I that just was love God's how, idea. Well, I love, I love it. I, I'm not going to do any yoga here. <laughs> I'm looking over. Please here. don't. It's like, hey, should I was we so uh, get? I'm glad it? you said as you're breathing in, pray. Uh, I know. Yeah, you know I, I can see your discomfort uh, level rising. Say, uh, yeah, you no, come from a generation that yeah, didn't have no, a good you understanding. Don't do that. You meditate on scripture. <laughs> meditate. <laughs> It's not but emptying, I think we your, should move it's on. Not emptying <laughs> your mind, it's filling your mind, right? No, it's, yeah, but yeah, of course, of course, of course. So anyway, obviously you know, we're... Thing, this, the, this person, there's no shame in what she's no. feeling. So, well, you know, like I, I'm not in line with, I know the truth, but I'm not in line with it. Yeah. I just think, I, I just, I'm in Romans right now. I just, I'm almost, I'm almost to chapter 12, which I love, you know. Talks oh, about that's a great one. The mind. Yeah. But in, you know, six, seven, and eight, that's all about, you know, the struggle. Paul says, I'm, I don't do the things I want to do and I do the things I don't want to do. Who shall set me free from this body of sin and death? And yeah. then Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation. Hmm. To those who are in Christ Jesus, Christ is the one who who, actually who sets us free, mm-hmm. and so it's great that she wants to bring this in line. Yes, bring it to the Lord. You bring know, it to the Lord. take it to the Lord in prayer, and, and do something about it. I think yeah. like try some new things, be open to new things. If you're like, I don't like the breathing thing, don't do the breathing. Thing. Just try stuff. You know, I think that's <laughs> the point. You are enjoying content brought to you by Intentional, a crowdfunded nonprofit that desires to help families and marriages all around the world in the area of discipleship and spiritual formation. This offering is completely free, thanks to the generosity of our growing community of Legacy Builders. Legacy Builders is a group of people from all over the world that gives monthly to fuel this dream that we have in our hearts of seeing discipleship to Jesus in the family become a way of life. A monthly gift of five, 10, or even $30 can continue to fuel this ministry forward. Our dream is to invite people like you to join and partner with us at a financial level and to see this work integrated into families. So as you listen to this podcast, would you prayerfully consider joining us? Would you allow the Spirit to lead you, even if it's just a few dollars a month? Thank you so much. And may the Spirit of Jesus give you wisdom, clarity, and joy as you pray about joining us. If you want to join today, go to intentionalparents.org and click on Give. This is kind of on the same note, but uh, I mean, similar but different. Um, What does repentance truly look like as a mother or parent? Let's say parent, because I think that's more applicable Mm -hmm. for a parent who struggles with anger and a short temper. This person says, I feel... Like, I repent, and I really do give it to the Lord, but it happens again. <laughs> yeah, welcome mm. to the club. How do I explain this to my kids? 
So not only what does repentance look like when you have ang- struggle with anger, short temper, but then how do you explain the fact that you did repent, God does forgive you, <laughs> it like but it happened working. again? Yeah. Um, how do we explain that to our kids? You want to start, sweetie? Man, I feel like I just want to say whoever asked this question or whoever is listening who can relate to this question, you're not alone. Like this is such a struggle for me. I think there isn't a a parent on the planet that doesn't have moments of struggling with anger. And then I think there's some of us that struggle with it more. Um, And I think, you know, we talk about this a lot, but that whole repentance piece and repairing with your kids is more important than how often you mess up or get it wrong or get it right. Like that's actually of lesser importance. It's what we do with with our failures, what we do with our sin, what we do with the, with the Mm. misdirected emotions that we, you know, view our kids as (laughs) the cause of, it's what we do with it. And so I love that the person asking this question is, is asking for forgiveness. I would assume to her kids as well. And she's asking, how do I explain this to my kids? It is a beautiful opportunity to explain the gospel that what we have been saved from and that what that God is continually saving us, continually redeeming us, that we are imperfect sinners in need of a Savior and that God's grace is inexhaustible. His mercies mm. are new every morning. Mm-hmm. As far as the East is from the West, so far as He removed our transgressions from us. Like to teach our kids that that is true and that that doesn't mean that we are going to be perfect. It means that each day we're going to mm. get up again and we're going to allow God to redeem us again. And we're going to bring him our mistakes again. And year over year over year, they if you are doing that, if you're truly doing that and repenting every time, even mm. if you're repenting 80% of the time, like if you mm. have that humble posture, that's somebody God can slowly redeem and change. You're not going to be the same in 10 years, in 20 years. And it's going to go a lot slower than you would hope that it would. And you have to deal with with the thing underneath the anger, that's a Mm. whole other, we can add that to this conversation of, of working slowly to get to what is underneath the anger, because there's always something underneath it. But I have to do this with my kids all the time. I had to do it a couple days ago of, I just totally lost it. I did it this morning. And I was, yeah. I did this time this morning. Well, I didn't totally lose it, but I was really Mm -hmm. irritated. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going on your story. And how often I have to say, to our kids, I was angry and what I did with my anger wasn't okay. Mm. And to, cause I want to show them like, it's not your fault that I'm angry. Even if maybe what you did is what set me off, I'm still responsible for how, you for how I yeah. handle it, for how I parent. And so just taking that ownership, like you're teaching them to take ownership of their sin. You're teaching them that it's not okay to just blame somebody else. You're teaching them so much in that moment. So yeah. I think I I would say two things. I know I'm going on and on, but the making the repair is essential. But then I think digging deeper and mm. asking, what am I angry about? Yes. Like, is it, maybe there's a theme here. Maybe it's always when your kid does this, you do this. Or maybe it's something with your spouse or maybe, maybe it feels chaotic. Maybe there isn't a, a clear theme. Maybe it's lots of things you're angry about, but creating space and time to figure, to ask God that question. God, what is this yeah. about? Show me what this is about. Well, and I want to just, because I know, Phil, I want you to take us in the direction you're going because I, I would, I'm guessing where you're going to go, but I just want to highlight something why we're all, out of what you just said because I think it connects really quickly. And I wrote this down a while ago, but um, I can't remember where I was reading, but it was this idea that when parents don't take responsibility for their actions or for different situations, their kids often will. Yes. And that idea that we have a responsibility to explain what's happening Mm -hmm. in us, you know, like when you abrupt with anger or burst forth with anger um, and you don't explain that to your kids, oftentimes they'll be like, I'm, it's because of me, I'm bad. And, uh, and I wrote this down, but it's when a child goes through something that's overwhelming and a parent doesn't name it or label it or walk the child through how do we actually experience it? This is like the training part of parenting. Mm -hmm. Uh, something called a narrative void often opens up in that child's mind and they fill that void with, because of, because it was my fault. Mm. So when we don't talk about like, Hey, 
I was really angry and I was short tempered. Mm -hmm. And I want to be really clear that that like what you just said, you know, it's taking responsibility. It's and not your fault. It's not your fault. Mm -hmm. You're actually protecting even from this idea that your children might even internalize that this is all because of me. I'm the one. I'm mm -hmm. the problem. Mm -hmm. I think we have one of our kids that actually naturally does that. And I'm always kind of on the alert of like, how much do they think that's because of mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. versus like, no, this is just, I'm just having an off day. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really important. And, and just that whole idea, your kids are going to go through so many things. It's our job as parents to like slowly, calmly, gently, as much as we can with the resources that we have, talk with them through it, mm -hmm. explain it. If someone mistreats them, we're going to talk about that. Like, what do you do when in a minute, you know, mm -hmm. what do you do when another kid mistreats your kid? Mm -hmm. You have to name it and label it. We've been mm -hmm. going through this with our kids. I mean, the, and it's tiring. So let's be really honest. It is not like, oh, this is just barely happens. Mm -hmm. It's a, like an ongoing, <laughs> okay, they said that. They're probably, you know, we can't assume, but we, we can guess. They're probably feeling that. And what that seems to be making you feel is this. <laughs> and that's how you respond to that. And it's, and it's like, but then you have to connect these concepts. So anyway, be aware of the narrative void that can open up in your kids and you don't take mm. responsibility um, really as parents. Phil. Oh, well, repentance is huge. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's married <laughs> will have all kinds of opportunities to repent. <laughs> oh, yes. Anybody who has children will have many opportunities to repent. But, yeah. you know, I was, I was thinking as you guys are talking that Jesus, when he first began his ministry, the first thing he said, Mark chapter 1, you know, it says... Here, um, after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Gal Galilee preaching the gospel, the gospel, the good news. He was on a mission of to die on the cross to forgive us. Mm -hmm. but, but he said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent mm -hmm. and believe in the gospel. Yes. And so Jesus, those were his, that was his first thing he said. You know, repent means, you know, two different different definitions, I think they're both good, is to change your mind. Yes. It has to do with how you're thinking, but also turn around and go in the opposite direction. Like, so Jesus is saying, the kingdom is here. You're not living for the kingdom. I'm the king, mm -hmm. and I've come to preach the good news to you. Mm -hmm. So stop going the direction you're going in come this and way. come follow me. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and I will make you fishers of men. And so, yeah. um, and so I think that... Um, we do this in small ways. We do this mm -hmm. in big ways. And I love the rupture and repair because when you say to Scarlett, I was angry, but I, I didn't, I shouldn't have expressed it to you the way I did. Will you please forgive me? That's a repair. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible calls bring forth deeds in keeping with repentance. So when mm. we repent, it's a change of mind, but then usually we have to go in a different direction. And if it's been mm -hmm. involved in another person, which it usually does, then that's where there's some repair that has to be done. But the other scriptures that um, I just wanted to mention, in Paul's preaching in Acts 26, and he's telling, uh, he's talking to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, so get actually, away from... And that's what this mom is talking yeah, about. That's, yeah, that's what she's talking about. Turn yeah. to God performing deeds keeping no deeds appropriate to repentance so mm. it so there has to be a real godly sorrow mm. sometimes we're not really sorry <laughs> like sure. you know it's like sorry yeah, oh, sure. you're not sorry <laughs> you're not you know <laughs> you're mad but you know corinthians talks about two different the sorrow of the world mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. brings death you know yeah that was stupid i shouldn't have done that and eh, i'm a bad person uh, yeah. but godly sorrow um it's, it says here in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 7, brings, produces a repentance without regret. Mm -hmm. So in other words, there's like a cleansing that there's happens. A freedom. So let me just yeah. read this. So Paul's saying, I'm rejoicing, not that you were made sorrowful, but that you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance. Mm. And you're made sorrowful according to the will of God. Like I'm, I'm glad because I'm seeing this true repentance in you because it's going to lead to a repentance without regret. Uh, and, and so I think that when there's true repentance, there's a cleansing that happens. Yes. And, and that's, that's another way. The Bible says that we are to walk in the light mm -hmm. as He is in the light. So when, when we don't truly repent, we don't have real godly sorrow. I know in my life I'm just covering it up. Sure. There's no joy. There's no filling of the Spirit. There's no life. I'm not bringing life to others. Mm -hmm. you know, but, but if I can truly repent and mm -hmm. feel sorry, because all sin ultimately is against God. Yes. Because like mm -hmm. you may as well I sinned against my 
child or I sinned against my spouse. Yeah, but they were created by God and they're precious to him. So Mm. by treating them not the way he would want you to treat them, you sinned against him as well. Mm. So I just think that that can bring a beauty and a uh, sense of peace in our hearts. Yes. Mm. And with that mom, you know, trying the, the question specifically, and I think this is to parents, again, moms and dads, but how do you explain that to your kids? That was kind of the phrase that I was curious about too, because I'm thinking, how do I right now explain that to my kids other than to say, and this, maybe this is the, the response that we should have to this question, but my, my, how we do it, and this is not, I'm not even saying that everyone else should do it this way, but something that we land on is explaining to our kids that just like you mess up and just like you sin, so do I. Yeah. And just like you're in process, so am I. Yeah. So I want you to know that I am working on this, but it's not 100% all the time. I'm going to mm-hmm. have moments where I fail, but I want you to know that I am actively working on it. I am talking to Jesus about it. I am talking to mom about it. Um, and that seems to, I mean, at least, and I'm, this is only our situation, but that does seem to hit at least some sort of chord with our yeah. kids of, and I think even helping them see like, hey, you don't have this figured out all the time either. You say that you're, you know, sure. you apologize about disobeying or or uh, freaking out or talking back, and you tend to do that almost every day, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and I, and I forgive you every time, and I mean it every time. But yeah. these things are processes. They're not, and maybe helping even explain to your kids that it's a process. It is not a. I ask for forgiveness. God forgave me, which He does. And now I am never going to have this struggle ever again. No, so I think journey. it's explaining the journey process mm-hmm. piece. Um, I'm looking at that quote. I, that so I wanted, right I want I, 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 no, I, I know that's why I had it. So yes. I, I wrote this quote down. Okay, Allison Cook, we haven't had her on the show. We should. We've if anybody her. knows her. John Mark does. Oh, great. We've got an in. Great. But <laughs> he knows, yeah, he does know a lot of people. Nonetheless, though, we, we, we would love, I think a, it'd be fun to have her on the show. She is a psychologist, therapist, who is doing beautiful work in the world of psychology and theology. Yeah, yeah. So beautiful she has work. several books, with, uh, The Best of You, and yes. what's the other one? Um, we get, we'll we look and put them in the show notes, but let me just share this quote. Boundaries for your soul. Oh, yeah, that one's good. Um, and hold on, I've, there's, oh. there's a word in here that might throw people off. She says your best self. What she means by that in her book is your spirit-filled self. Yes, like, that's her the, definition of best God, self. Like the yeah. walking in the spirit, the, you know, we would say the spirit-filled version of you. Or, sure, and we don't need to s- yeah. stress too much. Yeah. We do, I think the spirit-filled version of ourselves is our best self. Yeah, yeah. But she just says this, I had this quote written down, like everyone, you have been wounded and have developed patterns that limit your ability to be your spirit-filled self and experience lasting peace. Internal challenges such as anger, guilt and unforgiveness require your attention or you end up overwhelmed and hurting others unnecessarily. I know this very well. Mm -hmm. And then this is the quote, this is the underlined part for anybody that needs it. It is hard to be good to others when you're hurting inside. Yeah, It's hard to be good to others when you're hurting inside. And I really, I personally relate to that. Like if I'm hurting on something or something feeling a lot... I do not become the greatest version of myself. Mm-hmm. So I, I think the the two things that came up when this question came about was what do you do as a mom that struggles or a parent that struggles with anger and um, lashing out? W- you know, what's what's hurting inside? Also, mm-hmm. bring that to the spirit. God, why am I sh- so short tempered? Is there something in me that you're wanting to address? You know, a curiosity mm-hmm. with God, curiosity with the spirit, um, and, and allow Him to do that. The beauty of that is if you are doing that in appropriate transparency to your kids. Like they don't, they're maybe it's not appropriate for them to know every detail of the hurt, but, Mm -hmm. but if this is the culture that you're creating, then it's something that they latch onto and are able to do themselves. So the very same thing happened this morning. One of our kids got really upset, lashed out in, in, frustration. I knew the thing wasn't the thing. We were in a hurry. We were trying to get out of the house. I even knew this time. I knew the thing wasn't the thing. I was like, I think you're feeling all these things about this other thing. And then this (laughs) same kid calls me an hour later while we're getting set up here and says, Hey mom, will you pray for me for this thing I'm going to later? Because what she was actually worried about was she's going to see somebody who's, who's she's struggled with and she's feeling a lot of anxiety about seeing this person and we've walked through it. We've role played. She knows what she's going to say, but she's just feeling a lot about it. And she called me to pray for her. And I said, Hey, 
seems like that was maybe what was bothering you this morning. She goes, oh, yeah, it totally was. <laughs> I even <laughs> said that, and she was like, no, it's not. <laughs> I was like, whatever. I don't think I, I'm, I think I might be right. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's move to the next question. Phil, do you have anything else on that one before well, we just, we'll go to the just next one? Well, I, I love what you said. How, how do you teach this to your kids? Yes. You said, well, we practice it in our own life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's our thing. Values are, you have to teach, but values are caught more than they're taught. Yes. So if you're being humble, how are you can teach your kids humility? Well, they need to see what it looks like in real life. So yeah. yes, sir. if you're prideful and arrogant, so what you're saying, it's not, you know, do as I do, you know, do as I say, but do as I do. It's not just yes, do sir. as I say. Look, mm -hmm. I told you to knock it off and quit feeling anxious. Yeah. <laughs> you know, instead they say, sure. well, hey, this is, I was anxious yesterday too, and this yeah. is what I did with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which made me think of the verse, and I love to quote this verse, the Apostle Paul, where he says, and by the way, this is right after, be anxious for nothing, let your mind dwell on these things that are pure and holy and right. He says, the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. That's mm. the that's the they're seeing it in you. Yes. Practice these things. Mm. There okay. It is. And the God of peace shall be with you. So nobody, we don't ever arrive. You know, we're learning so all good. the time. Yes. Paul's learned. So I've learned to be content, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just think you practice it and then you help them learn to practice you help it. Them and learn. you practice yeah. it yes. together. Yeah. It's a good yeah. I appreciate yeah. that not only that wisdom, but that foundational truth that you're sharing that I love the timeless truth of the scriptures because it, it helps you know the things that you're trying actually have been proven to be very effective yeah. over yeah. centuries and yeah. centuries. So mm -hmm. um, we'll end with we'll end with this last question today, um, so we, that we can give we'll answer just three. We didn't get to four. We'll get to three. Say, we've only done two. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do one more. So we'll do three. We have a new offering for you. If you'd like to receive daily or weekly text messages and encouragement around parenting, marriage, with prayers and scriptures, click the link in the show notes and we would love to send those to you. Can't wait to connect more with you. And that question is how to navigate church hurt while wanting to keep your kids slash family involved in church. So uh, let's just talk about church hurt for a second. Um, yeah. I think church hurt is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. I love the quote that you say, Phil, or that what, you'll say all the time. I I love, say? You say lots of things, but one of the things that you say that I do love is like, if you're looking for the perfect church, that one. Say oh, that uh, one. Oh, if, if you're looking for the perfect church, don't join it because you'll wreck it. <laughs> you'll wreck it. In other words, there is no perfect There's church. There's no perfect because church. Because the church is a hospital. Yes. And we're all being you know, redeemed and put back together, Yes, yeah. you know, by Jesus. But, you know, it, church hurt, I don't, we don't know what the issue is here. I mean, yes. that, that to say, if there's ungodly leadership, mm -hmm. that's going to filter down to a ungodly uh, yes. atmosphere in a church. Different and culture. That can be really hurtful. Yeah. And, and, so and everything rises and falls on leadership, yeah. which is why churches have elders that are spo they're supposed to be biblically qualified. Well, it's, it's yeah. why parents need to be walking with Jesus. It's why you need not just one parent, you know, yeah. obviously circumstances, some people don't have control of those, but that's why the ideal is a mom and a dad. There's order and structure that that is like divinely woven into us. But yeah, I, I want to be really clear. We don't know what the church hurt is, but as a concept or maybe as an umbrella term, uh, a lot of people have struggled with church hurt. People that have said things, it's leadership yeah. that has handled things poorly. I know we've had we've experienced it, and, and, and it's and a different kind of hurt than other hurt. I yeah. feel like because it's usually crouched in so much spiritual language. It's like the Feels wolf in sheep's clothing type scripture. Like it's like you're saying the right things, but the heart behind what you're saying is not Jesus's heart. Sure. It's a confusing, deep type yes, of hurt. It is. Yeah. And it can be, depending upon what your situation is, um, can really, really turn you off to the idea of church yeah. and the idea of why would I ever go to any church if, if people, especially leaders, handle themselves this way. Mm -hmm. So all, all we can say is that we understand. And I remember when we had experienced this, I was so shocked because we were at healthy churches in our, up, you know, in, in our uh, ministry uh, experience. We we had a healthy churches. We were part of uh, Solid Rock, which was West Side, then Bridgetown, and all the other churches. And and honestly, not perfect, even close. We would say that, but we'd also yeah. say like generally, we thought that was the norm. And then we started to realize like, oh, that's not the norm. And then we we bumped into some things, and we we realized like, wow, we hadn't felt church hurt before. 
But I remember even after that whole experience, we were very grateful, not that we had to go through it, but that we could relate with people in a sincere way yeah. who have actually experienced Because that's hurt a lot of people in a deep way. And I'd wonder for you, Phil, you've been in ministry for 45, 50, how many years now? Really? Is it 45, 46? Uh, almost, almost 50. Almost 50. It's yeah, almost 50 so, years in yeah, ministry. So yeah. like actively working in ministry. So you've had to have seen some things. I know you have. I oh, mean, yeah. I, I, I'm leading you on in this question. <laughs> I know. So maybe talk to us a little bit about church hurt though, and, and maybe your own, if you have any stories or experiences, but just w- when you hear church hurt, what, what kind of comes up for you? What's some of the wisdom stuff that you would want to speak to that? Well, wow. I mean, it's such a big issue and we don't know what the church hurt is. It could be all the way from, you know, a particular person on staff that, you know, disappointed you and didn't give you something you wanted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that could be that, or it could be something really deep and ugly, like Mm. immorality in the leadership or something, which unfortunately I've been on staff at churches where uh, men in leadership had Mm. affairs. Yeah. And it's like an atom bomb going off. You've taken over two churches from, right? Two churches from guys uh, that failed morally, right? Yeah. Well, one, I stepped in to lead pastor role after two guys committed adultery. Oh my gosh. One was belligerent and the other one was completely repentant. Wow. And the one that was belligerent, you know, there's never, there was never true repentance as far as any of us could see. And mm. things didn't go well. And he and his wife got divorced. The other man was broken and repentant and the church lined up outside the door to forgive him mm, wow. and for like an oh, hour and a half wow. they were lined up to come up and forgive him and I didn't, he went really, I didn't know a, that part. he went to a, a counseling center that's for people in ministry and missionaries for people who have burned out or experienced you know failure and um and you know he didn't go back and be a pastor again but stayed with his wife for years and years and years started an amazing marriage ministry wow. that's <laughs> that's where you know, beauty from ashes can come. But, um, I think that, um, when, when there is not a biblically qualified, godly group of elders leading a church, um, then all kinds of things are going to go wrong, Mm. which is why everywhere, when the apostle Paul planted a church before he left, he appointed elders, you know, appoint elders. Yes. Yeah. And then first Timothy three says exactly what they must be above reproach. Yeah. That doesn't mean Mm -hmm. sinless, but it means, it means that you can't point the finger at them. I mean, Mm -hmm. only Jesus is sinless, but the the NIV word is blameless. In other words, a reputation, they have a reputation, they have a reputation both within the church and outside the church. Yes. And they're fully devoted to their spouse. You know, husband of one wife means a one woman man. All my affection is for my wife. One who manages their own household well. They're not argumentative. There's all these qualifications that they must be, mm-hmm. and and they're qualifications that every follower of Jesus should aspire to. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. for an elder, they mu- they must be. There has to be time. There's got to you know, elder even includes some age, age like absolutely. experience and. Yes, sir time to observe fruit like yeah. i've watched their marriage for a while I've watched their children for a while and again there's no perfect family but but in a church they should be able to look to the leaders and say you know what i kind of want my family mm. to kind of be like that my mm-hmm. marriage to kind of be like that yes and and those people that are teaching should be teaching in all humility like i haven't arrived yet either mm-hmm. i had to ask my wife's forgiveness this week you know but sure. i love her and i'm working on it, that kind of thing so I think uh, when you've experienced church hurt, whatever the level it is, you you don't want to. You have to look at what really happened. Is this something that just because you can just well they hurt my feelings because I wanted to sing on worship team mm-hmm. and they said no, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go to another church. You know, I mean sure. that's not healthy. No. You know, especially if you've got a family, you're dragging them from church to church to church because you're looking for something that you want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if there's actually hurt where there's been sin in the leadership, then you know it may be time to go someplace. Basically, if you can't trust the leadership of the church um, because there are things there that are untrustworthy, then it's not going to be healthy. So you need to be in a place where the leadership is healthy and they're dealing with conflict and they're Mm -hmm. dealing with things in a godly way. And then I think there can be healing. And sometimes when you've been hurt, that is the best thing to get in a healthy mm-hmm. situation, even if it's just for a while. I, I know at, at Solid Rock, there was yeah. a, 
church that had been through some things, and a bunch of people came over from that church uh, because there had been a big transition in leadership, and everybody mm-hmm. was confused, and they came over, and, and there, was, there was like I think 150 of them, and I said, I bet none of them will stay, and they were there for about a year, got healed, the worship was healing, the, yeah. the Word yeah. of God was being taught in a healthy place, and they healed up, and then they all went, went out to where... Places, so. In, yeah. And I remember a, a church in Portland... Uh, Pastor Ron Mel, would be yeah, where he yeah. was like there for years and years and years, and it was like a hospital. Mm. Just his ministry was one of healing, mm. and I literally had people tell me, "Yeah, I went there for about a year and a half. I was a mess when I went there. <laughs> he put me back together, and now I'm ready to serve." And then they ended up in all these churches serving and and all mm. that kind of stuff. So I, I think that we just need to remember that there are different churches have different emphasis. And yeah. different uh, things that are kind of marks of, of who they are. And sometimes God does lead you to a place uh, to be healed yep. and then mm-hmm. to yep. step out. But ultimately, we're there. It's not that place I go to. It's that yeah. family I'm part of, rolling up my sleeves, yeah. living in transparency and community, giving myself to yeah. others. And so we need to be in a place where so we can that, do that. That's really yeah. helpful. I love that as a foundation. My one thought or you know just trying to get to the heart of that question was how do we stay you know how do we we've experienced church hurt how do we you know keep my my family you mm-hmm. know involved even though there's been church hurt yeah. um, and i think you gave a handful of things there but even to be specific i think there are certain things where you honor the priority of the community you honor the position you honor the church there's certain people uh, that might not be great that go to that church, and whether that's a church hurt that you've experienced from leadership, that's one dynamic, like you've said. If it's from other people in the church, um, I think it's also important to be aware that you can be in the church and go and honor, you know, honor the fact that you go to church, uh, but at the very same time, I, I, I wouldn't um, different differently said. I wouldn't throw out the baby with the bathwater. I would be very yes. slow yeah. yes. to throw out the whole experience because you had a bad experience. Yeah. Throw the, throw the whole idea of church out because something didn't go really well. There's some tension. I would do your best to work through it. Yeah, you know, I'm really glad you said that because I mean, we're all aware that you know during COVID, where most churches weren't meeting, mm. uh, most pastors experienced that a ton. Some most cases, half the church never came back. Mm. And many of them didn't end up at another church. They just stopped going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they say, yeah, I watch an online once in a while. And, you know, I've got a couple of Christian friends. That's not a church. No. A church has elders. And, you know, I was looking, I, I, I'm going to, we, most, most of us know Hebrews 10, where we're told, let's consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near, the day of Christ's return. And so it, there's, it's talking about how we, we need to be with the mm-hmm. family of God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the illustration I like is like what we're handing by this fireplace here, but it's a fake fireplace. I, know. I liked our other I house like real better, ones. real wood. <laughs> they're loud. So if this was a mm-hmm. real fire and I took a log out and I stuck it over here, it would flame for a little bit and then it would go out. Mm. It's supposed to be in the middle of the fire. Mm. And so I think that's what happens if, as believers, we isolate ourselves. And this is not just a New Testament thing. Like back in Deuteronomy, there were people that were sacrificing animals you know, out in the field instead of coming to the place that God had ordained. So like in Deuteronomy 12, it says, "...you shall bring your offerings, your tithes, and your contributions to the place..." which the Lord your God shall choose. And then later on, then it shall come about in the place in which the Lord your God shall choose for His name to dwell. There you shall bring all that I command you. Mm. So God always wants His people to come together Mm -hmm. uh, to a place. Yes. And so I think that that's church, and it's imperfect, and there'll be people that rub you wrong there. (laughs) But if the leadership is healthy and you can say, you know what, these are... These are good men and women in and, leadership here, and yes. they're on the same journey I'm on, and I feel that God's Spirit is yes, here, yes. then I can, I can be part and of it. And humility is so... Yeah. What, what I see in leadership, especially... You know, I haven't been in leadership even half as long as you, but in my experience, humility on both parties is so key. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't work with pride. You can't talk to pride. You know, if, if you are prideful thinking, there's no way I could have done anything. Well... You could be mistaken. Um, yeah. 
And I think any leader that's listening that doesn't take the position that you might have not handled that in a way that you thought you did and you could have come, like if you don't hold space for the fact that you could have done it wrong, you're going to, this is going to follow you everywhere in yeah. your life. Mm -hmm. And so even that thought of reconciliation biblically, that's such a big, big, important word, but it's also an important practice that the reason we have things like forgiveness and reconciliation is because there are fractures, yeah. Yeah. but they can be restored even with people that aren't your family, especially yeah. with people that aren't your family. And what a beautiful thing to practice like actual uh, biblical life than to like reconcile with those who you have distance from. The only way that can truly happen is if there's humility present in those conversations, love, humility, graciousness. Yeah. You know, I think the word graciousness is a very under... That idea of graciousness is a very underused idea. Yeah. Oh, I know something we're even talking to our kids about because we're just seeing most people right now these days are not gracious. If somebody messes up, they're just attacked. They're swarmed. You know, it's mm -hmm. just like graciousness is an important thing not only to have as a as Jesus follower, but to to pass on to your kids because mm -hmm. people mess up all around you, and you could make a stink about everything. Yes. And a lot of people do. And their lives are miserable because every little thing, I feel like you're wanting to say something like really hard. You're like, you're squirming. So I, I would like to move my time to my wife, Elizabeth. No, no, no. Here. I feel like you guys have covered so no, much but, of it, but I feel like what, to your point of what you're saying of graciousness, I feel like it is almost lacking more in the church because now we have this idea that we are that the church is supposed to just serve us and that we are a spectator <laughs> and it's supposed to meet all of our needs. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be able to be careful with all of our wounds <laughs> and it's supposed to have all of the things we want it to offer our kids, all of the yeah. opportunities when we want them, but when there are <laughs> opportunities to serve, we don't want to step into it because that doesn't sound fun. I mean, I'm, I'm saying we, because we fall into this too. Like, this, I don't. I think this can <laughs> often be... You're by yourself on this one. This is a whole other deeper topic. I think we have such a misunderstanding of what the church is for yes. so often. If you're enjoying this content and you want to go deeper, we have an amazing resource that we want to tell you about. It's the intentional film series, Raising Passionate Jesus Followers. Now, this is an incredible tool for you for spiritual formation in the family. And we created this film series to help parents in their God-given task to raise and disciple their own children. Now, our hope is that we're able to help you and give you some of the tools that I know we so desperately need as we're in the process of raising our kids and Phil and Diane have actually raised their kids. This is a nine session film series on the process of what raising a passionate Jesus follower actually looks like. There's some workable solutions in here. There's a bunch of wisdom from the scriptures and there's a bunch of practical help in your journey as you are raising your children. We cover all sorts of things like parental roles, goals versus values. What is discipline versus punishment? How do I create a heart of obedience in my child where they actually want to obey? What is a heart of self-control look like? Or how do I even help my child in the process of character development? We cover that and so many more things. You can use this film series in a variety of ways. You can use it at your home, preferably with your spouse if that's applicable, with a group of friends or in your community, or even through your local church. All you need to do is head over to our website, intentionalparents.org, click on film series, and then follow the prompts. We have a bunch of other resources there that you can check out, but we do pray that this blesses you in your pursuit of raising passionate Jesus followers. We did an episode, actually, we did, Why Go yeah. to Church. It yeah. was about a year and a half ago, but we'll put that in the show notes. Why Go to Church listed out 10 reasons from mm -hmm. uh, Ronald Rollheiser, who brilliantly put that together. Mm -hmm. But we walked through it, and we talked through it, and it was a very... Um, insightful, even for us as we were processing it. But yeah, check that out. Keep going. Well, and I want to be careful to not discount. It doesn't mean church hurt is not real. It's very much real. But I think there are two kinds. And I want to be like so careful in how I say this, but I feel like I just need to say it. I think there's there's the kind that you talked about, Dad, that comes from ungodly leadership mm -hmm. where where the leadership has hurt you. They have mishandled something, which... yeah is going to happen because pastors are not perfect. Elders are not perfect. And unfortunately it happens. And that, that is deep and that is real. And sometimes those people who should be humble are not humble. Yeah. Sometimes it's not resolvable. Sometimes you do need to move on. Um, I loved what Jenny Allen just answered this question. We were at if gathering and, and she was asked like, what do you say to those people? The church is just hard because of church mm -hmm. hurt. 
And her response, she said a lot of great things, but the thing that stuck out to me was she said, if you can respect the pastors and the elders, those in leadership in the church, if you can respect how they're leading the church, you need to stay and be a part of the solution. Yeah. And I just, I loved that answer. Um, but there are situations where you can't right. respect the leadership and you do need to find somewhere that you can. But I think there's another kind of church hurt that that I don't want to say happens more often, but sometimes where we go in expecting that these people are going to meet a need for us that only God can meet perfectly. Right. We go in carrying all of our wounds. We take every childhood wound. We take every wound that's happened in our marriage. We take all of our fears with our kids. We're coming in with all of that. God is the only mm. one who can truly meet all of that. And he uses community, he uses church, he uses really good pastors in a beautiful way, but they can only meet parts of those needs. God is the only mm. one who can meet the whole need. And so often we're hurt because, because something the pastor said or some opportunity they didn't give us or something somebody else did in our community group is really just hitting a deep hurt that was already there. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, that those hurts will follow us no matter what church we go to. Exactly. Unless God can heal those wounds, and often he uses churches to do it. I mean, the very same church hurt that we carried, God used other pastors and leadership teams to help heal some of that. Oh, he literally, the thing that hurt so deeply, he used to also heal so deeply. Exactly. Which exactly. it was the same group of people that hurt a different group of people in a different place. Yeah. Yeah. For, for that healing. And yeah. I agree. But I think, I think to your point of being humble, we have to also be willing to look at our own wounds and say, is this actually somebody wronged me and is intentionally trying to hurt me? Or is this, they're reminding me of my dad and my dad <laughs> hurt me deeply. Oh yeah. And their similar personality, their similar approach to communicating and it's just bringing up all that stuff for me. I think oh, it's, yeah. I think it's oh, important yeah. that we have that awareness and mm -hmm. that we have, like like we said in that, whatever, that Why Go to Church episode of like a, an appropriate view of what the church is for. Yeah, realistic and, expectations. Yeah, and, and there will be hurt because we are both hurt in community and we heal well, in and, community. And the other thing of like, obviously churches need to be set up for you know, there's certain things that are really helpful to have at a church, like a, a thriving kids ministry is a really important mm -hmm. piece. If you have kids for sure, um, different elements are really important that they're actually Bible centered and they love Jesus. You know, those are all very important things. I also think that there's a lot of peripherals that we decide on when the foundation's pretty, when the foundation is good, but they might not have these extracurriculars that we prefer. So we're like, ah, oh, we don't love that because of this. And there's, like you said, Phil, there's no perfect church. Right. There's yeah. no perfect place. And there's going to be issues with each one in each situation. But I think we can even, you know, respond to that question or, and to wrap that up, I think we can still honor uh, the whole idea of church and God's design for the church, even if we've been hurt by the church. And that's, mm -hmm. and I know that's really tricky. And, I, and I'm saying this as someone who knows. I know that yeah. feeling. So thank you guys for your responses today. These are great. Great stories, we Phil. We got through three whole questions. We got through three questions today, <laughs> but it's it's more than most. But we will we will keep doing as we work through. We'll keep uh, responding to questions. So thank you for listening today. 